What's up guys, it's Nyx, and in this video, I'm going to show you all the different parts of a model's head, and the reasoning of why those parts were separated. In my How to Draw a VTuber video, it has a lot of tips that'll help with separation, such as different ways you can draw your model and so forth, so if you haven't checked that one out, then I suggest watching that one as well. I'll have it linked down in the description. So for some quick general tips before we get into the actual separation portion of the video, I cover these things in my drawing vid, but it's still relevant here. So for folder and subfolder organization, this is really important to keep things organized, otherwise you'll get lost. Each side separated left and right on different layers, such as the eye iris, one layer for right, one layer for left. And speaking of the left and right, it's the model's left and right, which since we're facing towards our model, it'll be opposite to ours. And since she's looking straight forward at you, the left and right will be flipped. On everything, you're going to need overlapping, such as filling voids and such. Make sure each piece is a full piece. Like on the face, make sure the head is filled in behind the eyes, for example. Make sure the void behind the hair is filled and it's full hair pieces instead of the line art, base color, etc. For the arms, make sure there's overlap to account for bending. You get the idea. Shadow and line art is merged with the base color all in one piece. Have the expressions in the same PSD file, but in their own folders. You don't gotta draw out all the expressions. Certain expressions you can rig like shocked expression or anger expression. You don't need to draw out each of those kinds of expressions specifically, but if you want ones like starry eyes or say heart in your eyes or something like that, then you gotta draw out the hearts and the stars to rig specifically for that emo. If you make a mistake on your model, it'll be okay. You can take the PSD file and fix it at the mistake and bring it back into Live 2D and you won't lose any progress on it. So don't worry too much if your model might not be perfect. If it isn't right, you'll figure it out and you'll be able to fix it no problem. I had a few things I needed to tweak on my first model myself. Live 2D is very flexible and it seems like every rigger has their own preference on how things should be cut up and organized. So that just goes to show that everything can be done differently. Don't stress yourself out. Like, you can name the nose eyeball, and Live 2D won't implode on yourself. You'll just blindly confuse yourself in reading the layers at worst. So let's get into the separation of the head. The head has the most stuff going on. It's a bit more complicated than the body with all the eye movement, the mouth movement, and the hair, and all that. But the focus will be on the head anyways, so I guess it's a good place for most of the work to be. Keep the head shadow separate. This aids in making the model appear more 3D when you adjust the shadow with the head. For example, on my cat girl, when I look up, you can see that the lower shadow becomes more prominent. Keep the blush separate, specifically for emoting. On my models, I will add a very light flush and merge it with the base layer, but this is just a stylistic thing. I just, I think it looks nice. You don't have to do this. If I want a emote blush, I will draw a heavier blush. You only need to draw one head, specifically in a straightforward direction. I've had questions asking if you need to draw the other directions, like the head turns and stuff, but no, that's all done with life through the rigging. So onto the eyes. For the eyelashes, separate is not necessary, but I do it because I want to have those bouncy eyelash physics. I think it looks nice. For the eyeshadow cast, which is the eyeshadow cast from the eyelids casting a shadow onto the eye white, not like the makeup eyeshadow. I have this behind the lashes, but clipped over the rest of the eye layers and I set it to multiply. I feel like it adds a nice dimension to the eyes. I didn't do this on my cat girl model, but I did do this on Yokuma's model. It just depends on the look you're trying to go for the style, and how extra you want to go with these layers and details. Now for the eye white, which is pretty much the white of the eyes, I have all the other eye layers clipped onto this one. I clip the other layers here so the people and all the other ones, they stay in the eye area. Uh, again, on my cat girl, the eyeshadow is just merged this part. Now for the pupil and the iris, it's nice to have these separate, but again, you can get away with keeping it one layer. I have it separate on my cat girl model though, as I think I can achieve a much better 3D effect with having them separate. I just liked having the control, and it's just a preference, but you could definitely get away with just having them merged, and you can mess with the meshes to create a more 3D effect if you prefer. So on to the eye shines. I really go ham with the eye shines, it's one of my favorite parts of rigging. I just play around with the shines and the effects you can get with the blinking. It can really transform a model and bring so much life into it. I like doing multiple layers of different shines and sparkles. I soon do at least like three to four different layers personally, but that can vary depending on your style and preferences. Keep in mind where they're reflecting from. Using the pure symmetry tool on the eye shines will give the effect of the light coming from straight on, but having a light shine in your model's eyes from different directions can really help make it look more interesting. I draw it with the symmetry tool initially just so the shines keep the same shape, and on one side I'll flip it horizontal and I'll position it to match with the other side. Now onto the eyeshadow and makeup. I'll have the eyeshadow and liners on one layer behind the rest of the eye, but on top of the eyelid part. If I were to add sparkles or say a shimmer, I'd make a sparkle layer and I would layer that on top of a matte eyeshadow layer or on top of the eyelid. And then I would make a layer with a soft shading in the color that I want the sparkling effect to be. I'd have this clip to the sparkle layer. 
Then in the rigging process, I would move the soft shading around with the model's movement, which would help give me that pretty shine effect. For both this model and my cat girl model though, it's just a basic matte eyeshadow, no shining or sparkles. So for the eyelid, usually the eyeshadow layer will kind of fill this role for me, but I do like to draw an eyelid crease, and that crease will kind of give the effect of the eyelid going in and creating the crease effect when your eyes are open. So for the eyebrows, I personally do two eyebrows right exactly the same on top of each other. One is full opacity and the second one is around like 40% or something. I have the full opacity eyebrows under the bangs and the half opacity eyebrows over the bangs. I do this so the eyebrows show through, but you can tell they're being obscured a little bit by the hair. This is just a style choice, so you don't gotta do this, but I just think it looks neat. Okay, so for the nose, with the nose line, my style has a minimal nose or line or dot kind of style. I may do a small tutorial on a more realistic shape type of nose in the future, but my models have a more simpler nose. The nose shadow I place right behind the nose line, it's a small little shadow area, just something to give a little bit more depth and help with the 3D look. And as for the nose shine, I have this in the shape of more of a diamond shape, and I have this right behind the nose shadow up higher so it looks like a light is shining down the nose bridge area. I feel like it could give a nice shine and aid in the 3D effect. So, when I rig a nose, I'll use all three of these parts and position them differently according to what side the model is looking. If she's looking to the side, then the shadow will be a bit more back into the side of the line, and the line will be more tilted diagonally, almost like a dash. The light will also follow the movement of the shadow, just higher. Now onto the mouth. For the upper and lower lip, I like to have some extra skin around these, so when you close your mouth, you hide the inside and the back of your mouth. So essentially, I'll have the skin around the lip merged with the lip line, and I'll have any lipstick or lipstick shine or any of that merged with the layer as well. For the top and the lower teeth, for me, I just drew the teeth once and duplicated it, and then I flipped it upside down, and here we go, the top and the bottom teeth. But if you want to get a little bit more detailed and have more unique looking top and bottom teeth, yeah, it's just you just draw them. Just make sure they're separate. Do not merge these two layers together. For the back teeth, this isn't necessary, but it's nice. It adds a bit more depth to the mouth. It's, an, it's a nice touch. For my cat girl model, I just have a regular tongue. It's just a simple curved tongue. Doesn't need to be extremely detailed or anything, but yeah, it does the job. For a sticking out tongue though, if you want to have that fancy tongue out physics, it's optional, but if you really want to have that functionality in your model, you'll ha uh, have to draw a separate tongue that is sticking out essentially. My cat girl model doesn't have this, but Yokuma's model does have this. And the back of the mouth. This is where everything is going to clip to. This is in the back of the layer order, and you clip the teeth, the tongue, and all that to this layer. So, onto the hair. The hair strands, the bangs, the side hair, back strands, back of the head, the point tail, etc. The amount of hair separated depends on the model style and the amount of physics you want to add, but I'll tell you the amount I do for my models. You don't gotta follow that amount if you don't want to, of course, but this is just what I do for my model. So up front, before the body and the head and layer order, we have the bangs and the front side hair. For bangs, I tend to separate the chunks in about five different layers. The bangs are really important, as they're more noticeable up front, so make sure you separate them really well. The front side hair is next in line. It's in the layer order behind the bangs, but still above the head in layer order. For my models, I do about two to three chunks on each side for the separated. Next, we move on to the back side hair, which is behind the body in layer order because they'll be laying behind the back, and we'll show on the head next to the front side hair. I'll have about two chunks of hair on each side for this, and my cat girl model does not have this part as her hair is in a more tied up hairstyle. Here I have the back of the upper hair, which is the hair that is showing at the top of the head. Design for this part changes depending on if the hair is tied up or not, like in both of my models here, or if it's a loose down flowing hair type of style. I have this behind the side hair in layer order, but in front of the back side hair. This is because the back side hair is supposed to look like the hair underneath, as if it's falling down, like the hair is half pulled up kind of thing. I have the back strands next, which is the hair that is falling down the back. This is way back in the layer order, behind the body as it falls down the back. I have a lot of these strands separated to give extra physics and bounce when I start to play around with that. I like the extra flowiness that it gives. Then, I have the back hair that covers the back of the head, which, frankly, will never be seen, but I'd rather have it to fill the void just in case I feel like it's good practice. Now, depending on your model's design, uh, a ponytail or buns, I have this way back in the layer order behind everything else. And, yeah, it does, for this it just depends on if your model has this type of hairstyle or not. So for shadows cast by the hair, the way that I approach this is that I just draw the bangs and the side hair as shadows underneath in layer order, 
and I have it the same shape, the same amount of separation, and I will rig it the same exact way, and I'll do the same exact physics. And it should match the hair with the movement. So for animal ears, horns, tails, wings, any type of unique features I just added to your V2 model. For horns specifically, it's separated with the front and the back, which it depends on the horn shape, of course. It could have a lot more separation and all that, but for these ones specifically, this is how I separate it. For ears, which again depends on the type of animal and what you want to do with the ears, but for my cat ears, my basic cat ears, it's just three parts. The front part, the floof in the middle, and the back part. So that's all there is to it for separating VTuber model's head. Consider liking and subscribing if you liked my video, it really helps me as a small creator. And leave a comment down below if you have any other questions about separation of a VTuber model. I will link down in the description my video that I made on how to draw a VTuber model, and coming up soon will be the separation of the VTuber's body. So look forward to that, I will see y'all in the next one, bye everybody, bye!